Hi, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. I'm your trusted source for breaking down complex health topics related to COVID-19 and autoimmunity. So join me as I navigate the latest research and give you insights to protect and enhance your health. So if you want to stay ahead of the research, please follow me here as I try and bring through some novel concepts. The first thing that I'd like to start with is I'd like to highlight the fact that upcoming in a few days time is the presentation about does the vaccine increase the risk of infection? And within that framework, the question is the causes and implications for recurring infections in the vaccinated. There is still some space left, so get your tickets if you want to be up to date with the latest science. So where are we today? Why am I talking about the retina and the eye? And it's largely because we are struggling to get research around autopsies about what can be happening in relation to disease that is not so visible. I'm very careful with my words here. And my words will be probably clarified a little bit more by this paper that I'm now sharing. So in this paper here, this was actually published in 2021, and it was in Springer Link here. You can see in 16th of December, 2021, the eye of the storm, COVID-19 vaccination and the eye. And they were just highlighting in this, they were looking at some of the most common ocular adverse effects, facial nerve palsy, central venous sinus thrombosis, and these COVID-19 vaccine induced ocular effects. And so this was all looking at what happened in the vaccinated cohort with regards to side effects of the eye. As usual, it seems that everybody always says these are minor things, they don't happen very often, so don't worry about it. I don't approach it that way. I always assume that if we are seeing a problem, it's only the tip of the iceberg and we need to dig underneath to try and understand a little bit more about what we're seeing. When they did their research, they found that these were the areas that were most primarily affected. You can see up the top here was Bell's palsy. Then there was central venous sinus thrombosis going down to acute macular neuroretinopathy. And this is talking about the eye itself. And so within that, I realized that the eye does not lie. When you or if you are looking for something, you can know that if you look in the eye, there's a good chance that you're going to see it. Now, most of medicine is about screening for disease and identifying disease early. And what we're doing is trying to use simple screening tools to help us to be able to do that kind of work very, very quickly. Now, you have to know that from my point of view, I've always gone from the autoimmune perspective. And this here is the slide that I always use, essentially saying that the virus binds to free ACE2. ACE2 is the antireceptor, gets picked up by the immune system, and the immune system makes autoantibodies. And that's what we explained in our paper was severe COVID-19. There is nothing that I've seen after three years that changes my perspective. The only thing is that it has expanded to include not just ACE2, but a number of other proteins, which I'll come to in a minute. So what is important about this and why is this so relevant now? Well, I'm going to show you a very important chart that was done by Outside Allen. He's great when it comes to picking up excess deaths and looking at the data. And this was one of his more recent publications. And you can't see it necessarily very closely, but just understand this. Anything that is green is less than 10% excess mortality. Anything that is light red is greater than 5%. Dark red is greater than 10% and black is greater than 15%. Up here was 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. Down here was 2021. So this is just about six to eight months after the vaccine campaign had been started. 
down here was after we had in 2022 this was well omicron had surged but it had passed already in the first few months of 2022 look what happened here in terms of dark red and black at the moment we are still showing excess mortality across most age groups but as you can see in the elderly there so many have died that it is now bring, coming down but what is extremely worrying, worrying is this age group, 0 to 24, 25 to 49, very high excess mortality up to May of 2023. This is important data. And what's happening is that there doesn't seem to be sensible explanations for what is going on. And that's where I am looking for how can we screen? How can we find and identify who is at risk? Important point, people seem to perceive that everybody is at risk of complications. No, that's not the case. In almost every disease, you will find only a small percentage will manifest the disease. But across a population, if we're dealing with potentials of vaccine injuries, because so many people have been vaccinated, Small percentages make huge impacts on the health services across the world and excess deaths. So this is important stuff. So here is just a little bit of education about what we're talking about. I've got here a quick image of the retina of the eye. So you have both eyes. You can see this um, light area here is where the optic nerve tends to go out to go to the brain. These red areas here, these lines, are the arteries from the retinal artery. This slightly dark area here is the macula. That's where usually you see the details from whenever you're looking at anything. So the eye then becomes a critical part of what we do. And the beauty about it is that we can see it. And this is where we have a breakdown of the structure of the retina. I'll make this a little bit bigger here. So you have here an eye, and they've just done a cut section here from BioRender. And you have about eight major layers of neurons or specialized neurons in the retina of the eye that help us to see. All the way up from the nerve fibers are at the top. And on top of that actually is the blood vessels that we had seen before. And then you have all these layers of neurons going all the way down down to the very back here where it meets with the choroid, which is another set of blood supplies are supplying the base of the retina. And usually this part, the separation from the retina uh, and the choroid is what happens in macular degeneration. But that's a, a separate issue at the moment. But just to let you recognize that the retina is a very sophisticated part of the body. And most importantly, it's visible. And that's why it's so useful. So regularly when people go for their eye checks, they will have very important tests done. This is what it looks like for anybody who has been for their eye checks. And therefore there is very valuable data that exists. And the data is primarily the one I'm focused on is optical coherence tomography, OCT. It's a kind of investigation that is done again regularly, but it is so sophisticated that you can see that it cuts through. It takes a picture of the retina in detail showing the blood vessels, but it also cuts through the various layers that I've been talking about and can look at them in detail. That to me is extremely important when we start to think about looking for potential areas of damage in the retina that can highlight important things that we're looking for. Now, as I said before, I've been focused on ACE2 autoimmunity, but when we look in more detail at the spike protein, and you've got it here, what I've been focused on is this is ACE2, but there are a number of other proteins that also bind to the spike protein. One of the big ones that I've been focused on is neuropylin 1. This is a critical protein and it's spread in multiple parts of the body. And so in the context of an autoimmune response, I've had ACE2, but you can just replace this with neuropylin 
and you could potentially be getting autoantibodies targeting that in different parts of the body. My view is that if it is occurring, there is a pretty good chance that we would see it in the retina of the eye. And so if I was looking using OCT, this is what I'd be looking for. Neuropyelin 1 tends to be in these two layers, the ganglion cell layer and the inner plexiform layer. And I would suspect that if OCT can study it in detail, it may show that there is damage in this region. But again, in most things with medicine, you have to know what you're looking for and you have to know why you're looking for it. But that's the principle in terms of the eye being the window that allows us to look inside the body and look and identify damage. There's still a lot of work that has to be done. Critically, it needs an acknowledgement that there are problems. If you don't believe me, just remind yourself of this image. Just look at where the red is and the black. Look at the age groups. This is now the younger age groups having some of the highest excess mortality over the past five years. We need to understand why. And what better place to look than in the eyes? That's where I think that we need to go. That's where we should be screening. And that will give us a chance to identify those who potentially are at risk early, screen them, and critically mitigate damage. Without mitigation, without screening, without early identification, definitely most of medicine falls behind. Just think about what would happen with cancer if we waited until it presented at advanced stage to try and do something. Everything we do is about identifying problems early. I think that there is great potential with doing the same with eyes. Let's see what happens in the future. Have a great evening.